que es, es un compartir intercultural entre los pueblos, de y los pueblos de New Inglaterra, los de New Inglaterra and the of New y, y que queremos continuar esa conversación and we want to para ponerla de frente to put it dentro del diálogo within the dialogue el cambio climático, about ya que climate muchos change, de estos grupos because many of these groups eh, are marginated, are kept aside in the, países uh, del norte. In the eh, discussions that happen para, in countries of the north. Para continuar el, 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 el proceso y, y antes de, de pasar to continue a with this process and before we go on to our four panelists, eh, felicitar al, al I would like to congratulate Evercano Gongora Doctor Eric su nueva and his new post, mucho éxito and wishing y much success. We will have many conversations eh, and dialogues between our institutions. Y, y sin nada más, pues quiero dar la bienvenida a todos, without a todos los que nos están else, escuchando. Like welcome eh, disculpas por, la, por el problema técnico al principio, pero ojalá podamos tener una buena conversación de nuestros cuatro participantes. Que tengan un buen diálogo y una participación. Uh, we wish you a good afternoon and enjoyment here. Seminar, we'd have the participation of Leobardo T. Hernández, who is from the municipality of Morelos in Mexico, in the subject of how to survive in climate change. So I am giving Eber Marcelino Cardenud Gongora the microphone. Welcome. Good afternoon to all of you. I will introduce our first speaker, Jose Leobardo Ten Hernandez, and I'll read part of his experience. Mr. Hernandez is a graduate of the University of Quintana Roo and the ecological um, school and he has been teaching at the university in the Maya University in Quintana Roo but above all he has collaborated deeply in uh, with NGOs he has been an extension service leader nationally and in the state and he's presently he's in charge of agroecological knowledge I'm giving the microphone to Jose Eduardo so that he may share his experiences, which will deal with this concept of how one can survive when there's climate change. Welcome, Eduardo, Leonardo, and go ahead, please. Good afternoon. I am Jose Leonardo T. Hernandez, and I'm from Quintana Roo. I'm very, I'd like to say thank you for the invitation to all the people who make this transmission possible. And hopefully you can hear us and see us. I wanted to summarize in three points this subject of how to survive climate change so that we can understand a little bit what, what it is that we're feeling in the meat bus, in the units, in the distant areas. First of all, I wanted to call this surviving climate change because that is where you feel the truth. That is where you feel where climate change is happening. And in three points, I want to talk about the earth, the planet, or La Pachamama, like many people call it. And talk about the effects that happen. And third, what can we do to mitigate these changes that are happening and affecting us in the milpas, in the agriculture and in the distant areas of our regions? It is believed because there's some scientific scientists who call the planet the blue planet, but really, it's not called blue because three quarters of it is water and that's blue, but it's the effect that the plants have to create oxygen and oxygen creates ozone and that's how we get blue. 
when you see it. So if we think that we need to conserve our plants or produce plants or believe that there are, there should be plants where there aren't any, we could, will not be able to survive unless we do that. The Mayas were very knowledgeable about the soils of animals, flora and fauna, and they believed that in the decade, decade of 1961 to 1970, this change started happening. And they realized that the rain was starting to come at a much later date. It rains when it shouldn't, and when it should rain, it doesn't, and so on. They observed the birds. I'll mention a bird later on. Called Livia. But I wanted to talk about the traditional meat pie as well. Before people would plant corn, beans, and uh, squashes, because at the beginning they did not would not think about which were the benefits that these three um, crops were doing with each other. But they started realizing that each one gives a benefit to the other and would produce things uh, that were at the same time giving products for the table of the peasants. The effects that are happening now, people can no longer plant the squash and the beans because they use a chemical which eliminates uh, the bad growth, the weeds. Se pueden abastecer sin, sin ponerle algún fertilizante químico. ¿Sí? Otro es que los mayas eran muy conocedores en esto de las plantas. Esta planta también tiene otros beneficios, como por ejemplo medicinal. Se puede combinar con el maguey morado y con la jamaiquina que permite a la persona que tiene dolores en la espalda disminuir un poco, ¿sí? Después, si nosotros logramos tener esa diversidad de cultivos en nuestros huertos, en nuestros solares, en nuestras milpas, ya, ya está ahí, no, las calabazas an, anteriormente, pasa que ya está sazón, pues es lo que está lista para darle so, disculpe, otro producto. Siento, otra vez la interpretación no está funcionando. Um, Rudy o José, ¿tienen idea? Um, I believe that it occurred when there was a change in the interpreter. And I think then at that point, there has to be, again, a change where everyone switches back oh, to, to, the channel. to the different channel. Correct. So um, we were on the topic when the change occurred, we were on the topic related to the loss of interest of the young um, peasant farmers' children to continue the tradition of uh, the indigenous farming. So perhaps maybe we could pick it up from that point. Can you, can you just translate it into Spanish, I guess is what I'm asking. You're asking Jose Martinez or do you want me to do it? Um, I guess you could, I guess you could ask um, our panelists. Oh, okay. For restarting, but so I I restarted the interpretation, but it seems like. So we are going to continue with the presentation, uh, because I think you have problems uh, with the translator application with the application. and then we can switch interpreters and then we can rejoin if that's okay with everyone present.
That sounds great. Yes, I think it's a good idea if you can help us with the much. As I was saying, the Mayas were very knowledgeable about the soil, the plants, the birds, insects, etc. So for them, there was a cycle, a cycle that had to end. They were very grateful for everything. They would refer to them as polytheists because they would thank the rains. They would but nowadays people don't have that religious ritual connection. They rather believe that the crops are not plentiful. And when I say that the Mayas had that knowledge, at the beginning of January, for instance, when they talk about Chotkin, the Cabañuelas, they were thinking about April, May, June, when a bird, Calandrea la Yuya, starts creating a nest. When this bird starts nesting, they observe very carefully that if this bird is meeting 40 or 80 centimeters, that means that the dry season is going to be longer. But if the bird takes less time and only takes 40 centimeters, then they believe that the rainy season is coming and that's how they selected their seeds to know at what point they're going to plant that seed. So they had different crops based on how this bird interacted it, designed the style of nest so that then they could determine which crop to plant and which other crop not to plant. So for instance, if they used a corn that was of high quality or lower quality, that would be decided based on the rainy season's approach. And this was another way of um, leveling climate change. So for instance, biophilia or love for life, for green life. If we could reestablish a garden, a piece of land in a milpa where there are no plants, we will then generate or create bacteria, mushrooms, animals, so that there's pollinization, so that there's a chain where they're interacting and there's an ecological relationship and there's a better production of seeds and fruit. On the other hand, it is believed that in the decade of the 70s, the Mayas were documenting from one generation to another how the change was starting to develop since way back when meaning the rains were taking longer or they were coming before the predicted time. And it is believed that this observation of birds was a signal. There's another aspect that's very important too. Not so much related to rain or not, but for instance, when there are dry seasons in between, which cause crops that would not mature for the harvest. Ms. Yesenia is going to speak now. Let's invite Angelica Tasca Ceder so that she may speak to continue with this panel of traditional ecological Maya knowledge and climate justice. Next, we will have the participation of Angelica Cáceres. She is from the community of Sur in Cairo, Puerto Mexico with the subject, the Milpa uh, today. I will give the microphone to Maestro Jose Martinez Reyes of the University of Boston.
Welcome. Bienvenida, Angélica. Welcome, Angélica. Tenerla como invitada en este panel. Here as a guest in this panel. Eh, buenas tardes. Eh, pues queremos, como We parte de, like del proceso de, de, de conocer qué cosas están experimentando las personas en las comunidades mayas. Eh, también community. queremos la perspectiva de, la, de las mujeres. Y, y Angélica, que es descendiente, es originaria del pueblo de Chasil, en, en, al sur de Chasil, sur de Quintana Roo, eh, Quintana Roo, ha vivido en vida propia todo ese proceso desde su infancia. Y quisiéramos que, que nos compartiera su experiencia de cómo están viviendo los cambios of how changes are happening, affecting, y también se how they're puede being affected by them, and so if you can also speak to us about the program, program called que Growing para, Life, para Planting Life. El, I think there's a program, as los, I understand it, los, to promote los, los siembras y los huertos, uh, eh, comunitarios. growing community gardens. Bueno, sí, buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everybody. Bueno, cuando... We started talking about when I was a child. My dad has always worked in the fields and after school, they would always take us to work in the milpa that they had. And at that time, the soil was very fertile. They had a small part piece which was flat and they called that pet patch. You leave that to grow um, tomato, peppers, onions, all the things that are for personal consumption, short, short range. They grow fast. And at that time, everything grew well. In the first harvest, we had no problems. At that time, whatever you grew, you would have the basic Uh, uh, food stuff, uh, squashes, uh, corn, uh, beans. But as time went on uh, towards today, it is difficult for a small plant of those would grow by itself with just planting it because it doesn't rain, the sun is too hot, And the plant by itself, if it is not watered and is not fertilized, it will die. A program started where they are helping us very much in the small towns. We're being we are being taught how to plant, how to grow, how to collect seeds, and how to. Um, water the plants, the small plants. We are taught with seminars and workshops on how to implement a watering, uh, a drip watering, how to prepare organic fertilizers. And in the families, we are starting to do that in the family gardens because we do not use any chemical products. Prior to that, When the land was no longer fertile, we would use those chemical fertilizers and, and fumigation as well. But now, with the new program, we have learned, the technicians have taught us through workshops how to prepare fertilizers, how to apply them, for how much time, and it's working out. At least in my case, we've been doing this now for three years in the program, and I have not had any need for the, my family's uh, use. We plant everything you can think of. We take advantage of everything, else. every small plant of squash, of beans in the same area. And of course, it's not like before, but at least we are producing enough for our personal use. The soil now, if we do not help it, 
it does not produce any more. And more with the rain. We're in a region where we can implement uh, watering because we have deep wells. And the truth is, it, the land, the soil does not produce as much as before, but slowly we are approaching so that we have more for the community. We are working in the proper way now. And we're telling people that they too can do it. They can have their own garden at home, family gardens. And like that, they are telling us, many people, that it doesn't work. But we are noticing that it does work. We are doing it and it's working for us. Muy bien. Eh, y, y cómo, cómo well. ha sido la participación de, de las mujeres en, en ese proceso? Si nos puede hablar un poco. ¿Cómo, that, ¿Cómo ha aumentado? ¿Cómo ha desarrollado? ¿Cómo se ha desarrollado? Many women did not believe that this could be done. But now women are starting to accept it more and asserting themselves. We've had changes, flea markets where we can sell the product. And it feels very well that people are approaching the market and saying, how do you do this? And they explain, I, I plant a plant and it dies. And so the women are now sharing the knowledge we're trying to teach When we go to prepare the organic fertilizer, the children come and they fill little bags and the children get very enthusiastic and, and they start believing that a plant will grow. And so they are responding. In the town of Hazin, I would say that 25% of, of the women are part of the program. Okay. Y, y eso es para distinguir, para que los, eh, los escuchas entiendan, ¿no? La, so los, la distinción entre We el huerto, que es un, un garden, área manejada más pequeña, y la milpa, que area, es milpa, otra, otro tipo de, of, uh, de, de sistema de, de, de plantación, ¿no? Eh, yo tenía una, una pequeña foto para que la gente... Picture, So people can see Puedo ver, eh, la diferencia. The difference. Si puedo compartir brevemente. Let me share my screen very briefly. Eh, ahí, el, As you can see here. El área de la milpa es el área donde se milpa siembra tradicionalmente y donde se siembra el maíz, el frijol y la calabaza. Corn, beans, y y el, el petpacho, los huertos, son, es lo que produce patch, ya the, los huertos variados, frutos gardens, y, 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 y chiles fruits, y otro tipo de, uh, de condimentos peppers, y plantas medicinales también. ¿no? Medicinal plants. Exactamente. Eh, In fact, sí, adelante. Says our guest. Adelante, Angélica. In fact, we spend, as women, we spend more time to on the pet patch because it's not such a large area, but like Jose said, it has a variety of plants. Yes, yes, yes. In reality, has been a in truth, this has been a practice, a practice eh, ancestral that lleva muy, muy, that is ancestral. tradicional. No es que this is something that is not something es que new. Me ayudaron that a the technicians have ¿no? taught us. The eh, technicians have taught us to re-implement something that we used to do. As long as there is a, a milpa, there's always a little small patch that is left as the home garden. From my memory, that small piece is always left in the milpa, and that is where we concentrate. The women work that because of its smaller size, and the rest of the milpa is where the cows, the, the squashes, 
the camote, the, uh, the corn, all that is produced in the milk by itself. Alguna otra eh, experiencia o alguna, Any other experience? Eh, digamos, algún, or algún deseo que, que ustedes quieren con este, con este programa like de Sembrando like Vida. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo lo ven ustedes? Están tratando de, life. How do you see it? De, de expandir y Are visitar otras comunidades. Uh, ¿Cómo lo ven en, What do you see as en el futuro? Of the program? Well, in fact, this program... For me, it's, I love it. We are seeking pieces of land where the milpa has been had and is woods where there are no tall trees. So we work that soil. We plant the same way. Uh, uh, things that can be used for timber, the native uh, timber trees. And so we are doing Um, uh, uh, small plantations, uh, small cultivars that we grow. The ajillo where we live is an ajillo where all the wood has been taken advantage, which has the right dimensions. And so practically, there is no tall tree. There are no tall trees. What we're trying to do is to rescue those plants. We sell everything. We say, sell timber. We're trying to take advantage and rescue the trees that have already been exploded. They're, they've devastated everything. So with this program, we're trying to implement more plants And starting from y, se, y, y sembrar los árboles, ¿no? Y para so que regeneren y, y vuelva a tener so el, 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 el tipo de, de, de tamaño y de, de, y de espacio que tenían en anterior. Is that what you're trying to do? Yes. In fact, we are implementing both timber and fruit trees. There are plants that we didn't even know how to plant them, but In my plantation, I have pine trees which are the right size. I didn't know about that. And I love the program precisely because of that, because we've learned to write uh, plant yuca, cassava, pineapple, and this soil, we cannot do any burning. So the dry leaves that fall, we use them to, play, to protect the plants, the small plants from the sun, and we also, uh, the humidity, the moisture stays in the ground longer. So we plant things in their surroundings so that they help each other out, so that the sun does not burn the plant that we're really interested in. In fact, it is a very nice program because it is the first program, program that we have that we take very seriously. Other people have come to do reforestation and they would not plant little plants, but now we've learned to do it. And in several towns, we're trying to work it properly. Bueno, pues me alegra muchísimo I'm very que, happy to hear that. Que, que vaya el programa, ¿no? Encaminado en una buena trayectoria. Working. Y, right y ojalá pues continúe en esa, en esa dirección. Así que quisiéramos agradecer a Angélica so, por, su, por compartir Angelica, su experiencia for your eh, y, y, y podemos así pasar a, a nuestro tercer eh, panelista. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, Angélica. Thank you for José Martínez Reyes and Angélica Cach Cáceres. We will now invite Luis Ángel Yuchan and Dr. Ever Marcelino Cardo to introduce a tercera participación. And a continuación tendremos la participación de Luis Ángel Chuyan, él es originario de la comunidad de Espichil, Felipe Carrillo, Puerto México, con el tema Ceremonias del Ixcol por lo cual cedo el micrófono al doctor Ever Marcelino Canul Góngora. Bienvenidos. Muy bien, me voy a permitir presentar a Luis Ángel. 
Chukyam, él es originario de la comunidad de Ispichil, el municipio de Felipe Carrillo Puerto, Quintana Roo. Nació el 18 de junio de 1997. Ay, perdón. No, no está funcionando. Vamos a ver la, otra vez. La traducción. Un minutito, un minuto, por favor. Ok. Vamos a tratar otra vez. Can people select now? Yes. Okay. Adelante. Adelante, Ever. I would like to introduce Luis Angel Chukyang. He's originally from Chuchip in the municipality of Felipe Carriño Puerto. He was born on June 18th, 1997. He is from engineering systems in the University of Multicultural Maya in Quintana Roo. In 2017, he obtained a scholarship to do studies in Morelos, Jalisco, regarding uh, genetics in plants, and to do uh, in Chaplingo in agriculture. In 2018, he presented in the first International Congress of the Rights of Natives, which was, re which was done in the university in Puebla. And currently, he's cooperating in an association which is found in Carrillo Puerto, in Quintana Roo, where he visits different areas and communities and farmers, where he talks about seeding, uh, agroecology, and bio-prepared products. He's gonna to talk to us today about the ceremonies in the Ichtkol. Welcome, Luis, and please go ahead. Thank you very much for this introduction. I would like to talk to you about the ceremonies or rituals. Leobardo just spoke about some very important rituals or ceremonies that are being forgotten or abandoned, which are not being done in these areas, especially in those areas of agriculture where the Ichtkol is Ixtcol is a common word, and basically it means that it's within a plot, within a parcel of land. It's a term, a Mayan term, which refers to a space, a space which involves wisdom, not only planting seeds, but that germinated seed is a bridge of knowledge. So from the very beginnings, when uh, different activities are, are initiated in this each school or space, one begins with a special ceremony. There are various ceremonies. The first one is each school when one is going to limit or define a specific area uh, where you're going to establish the ichtkol in the corner. One offers seven hikaras, the sakap, which is corn, which is cooked and then ground. And this then is dissolved in water. Once it's dissolved, they will start distributing the five or six hikaras. This to symbolize the four corners of the milpa and one in the middle or center to symbolize the number. Once this ceremony is performed through this division of this uh, beverage, you offer this beverages to the Jung Selot. The Jung Selot are people, supernatural beings of the jungle who care to 
keep the jungle safe and to look after us because we are invading that space by creating our ichtkol. It's a way of revering or to ask permission in order for us to establish the ichtkol for our living. It's in Mayan language. It's, it's a way of asking permission to use that space of land. And then the activity, once it's done, we initiate it by measuring the space where this ichtkol is going to be created by the measurement of mekate. Every 20 meters, you put some stones and then you place a piece of wood to designate that that's going to be one corner of the ichtkol, of the milpa. And in this manner, um, the space is segmented. Once that is measured, another task is performed in Spanish. It's known as rosa which in Maya is harakichkak, which is the cleansing, the general cleansing of that space, which has been measured and delimited, and then start cleaning that space. So basically, it consists of removing plants that are not tall, small tree trunks, or some vines that need to be removed to be able to go to the next step, which is to cut. And then the ceremony of Sakap, where if we ask permission to all the animals in that space so that they should not affect us negatively as we create this space. Because during this cleansing, there might be a serpent, an animal that appears in that space, which could bite us or could affect our health or our safety. So this ceremony is done in a way of asking permission to these animals who are present to allow us to be able to work the land and to establish our milpa. And it's also a condition that we will look after them or care for them, not to eliminate them um, irresponsibly. And then you have the tumba. We've already cleaned the area. We've cleaned the space for the ichtkol. Now it's open. And then we start getting rid of taller trees or trees with higher. So it's a similar ceremony as the sakap with this beverage based on corn that we offer asking permission. These trees are taller, so it took many years for them to reach this height. So we're asking them permission to allow us to slash them, to cut them off, which is a way of asking them to allow us to kill them so that they can contribute in some way to our ichtkol. So we do the ceremony. We ask that uh, there's no retaliation, that they don't bring energies that could make us ill many times because of not asking permission. Uh, there could be an ill effect on our health. So one consults with the elders when we realize that we haven't gone through this ritual. Once the ritual is concluded, we wait one or two months. And during that time, we wait. Before the cycles were different, it was maybe six months to allow that cleansing area to dry so that it's ready for the burn, which is the next activity or step. So once we reach towards the end of May, the period for burning, like then we go through that next step of burning. We take into account, of course, the chopin, like was mentioned, which are times which are optimal for the burning. The sun, the wind are essential elements in determining a successful burn. A ceremony is done where we invoke 
Mosong Ik, who is the master of the wind, to help us not to go beyond that limit uh, where we are establishing our Ichkol. We beseech him or invoke his presence so that that wind should not go beyond or be in an area that's different than that area which has been designated for the Ichkol. They're very interesting words that are associated with uh, this burn. Chaklol, Chaklokmak is an entity of gods or within the realm of gods that one invokes. Chaklolmak is a red person that burns, that is in charge of fire and allows a successful burning, a homogeneous and uh, controlled burn or selective burn. And then once it's burned, we wait for June, which is when the planting begins. And then there's another festival of seeds that is present in the communities, which is a blessing of the seeds that you're going to plant within that space, that which all. So there's an altar that's made with different seeds, different varieties. There are all the seeds like of gourds or beans, as was mentioned before in that space. And then one proceeds to beg or ask that these seeds be blessed so that they sprout and germinate in a healthy way and do not affect negatively the animals because when you plant seeds, birds can remove the seeds because this ceremony of blessing was not done as a preamble. Once the ceremony is performed, then one starts the planting. And then again, in this planting, there's a very specific ceremony, the sakap, creating a wooden altar where the hikaras, or five or six, are exposed within that ichkol, and it's offered, and this offering then is sprinkled with soil to symbolize freshness, newness, in this area where we're going to plant these seeds. Once this planting is concluded, one has to wait for the elotes to grow. And then you have the hochek, which is the first harvest. Many times we eat soft corn in certain seasons, October, September. But before eating that elote, that soft corn, you first do that ceremony where you offer this to the earth, to the soil. Once this is all completed, one reaches a very interesting point, which is the handikol, which is a ceremony of food of the milpa, where you close the cycle or conclude the circle after going through all the previous ceremonies. There's a conclusion or concluding ceremony. We have the harvest, we had all this corn from this space, this each call, and now we're going to offer gratitude and thanksgiving to close this cycle of the each call. It's food from the milpa. Once the ceremony closes, there's a more general thanksgiving for that cycle, for that space. In this region, it's referred to as Cocobacan. It's a. In Maya, it's referred as Ococatlan. In Spanish, it could be interpreted or translated as a thanksgiving for the cycle of the milpa. So, all these ceremonies or rituals have a purpose. It's, it's a way of expressing that the earth is not disconnected, but it's something that is living and connected with us. 
So the purpose of this ceremony is to give thanksgiving, to acknowledge that the earth has life, that we're going to respect this of counteracting the shifts that are created, the changes that we create by slashing and burning. So it's a way of counteracting or balancing this process by following the rituals, by giving thanksgiving, by acknowledging the value of the soil. It's part of this cycle of knowledge and recognizing that nature has a presence. This has been lost and we have forgotten all these uh, customs and uh, wisdom and knowledge. Um, maybe someone has some comments they want to add here. Thank you very much of Luis Angel Chuchigan. Now we would like teacher Maria Santa to please come to our here to start our fourth participation. Can you hear me? I'd like to, we're sharing this through Facebook Live. We have already received some questions and we will respond to them when this fourth participant has finished speaking. A continuación, tendremos la participación de la maestra María Antonieta. Uh, my, my Antonieta Bucanegra Aguilar will speak, and her subject is food sovereignty, which in the region, the experience. Jose Martínez Reyes is going to introduce her from, from the University of Boston. Bienvenidos. Estamos listos. Welcome. La, are we ready for the next translator? Uh, Can you hear me? All set. All set. Fantástico. Muy bien. Uh, bueno, tenemos como nuestro último panelista uh, a maestra María Antonieta Bocanegra María Aguilar, Bocanegra que es Aguilar. licenciada en Relaciones Internacionales de la Universidad de Quintana Roo, maestría en Cooperación Internacional para el Desarrollo. In development, international development, and since 2002, ha she has international cooperation, the international foundation, and civil civil society organizations, both national and international. Eh, en varios institutos de académicas, en temas de cooperación, de desarrollo a través de la Centroamérica, en Nicaragua, Centroamérica, en Nicaragua, en Nicaragua, el Observatorio de Cooperación Internacional, principalmente enfocándose en la región del sureste de México y Centroamérica. Ha sido ya responsable de la gestión de fondos de asociaciones civiles como la Organización Mexicana de Apoyo a las Bases, la Comisión Mexicana para la Defensa y Promoción de los Derechos Humanos, UYOCHE y el Centro Cultural Educativo El Jardín del Colibrí para el desarrollo de proyectos con enfoque en temas de desarrollo de derechos humanos, cultura y medio ambiente. Y cuenta con una amplia experiencia en la gestión cultural de base, en metodologías de investigación, participativas con las comunidades with participation of the community de and members, Hoy, especially in the eh, Yucatán Peninsula. Ha, ha tenido, ha, ha respondido a nuestra invitación y, y, y la agencia y la organización a la cual dirige, que es Uyoche, which he directs, which lleva muchísimos años trabajando has con been las comunidades mayas de las Maya zonas in de, the area del centro del estado of the de Quintana Roo. Y a partir de eso, and eh, han, han hecho Starting mucho trabajo that, relacionado a la soberanía alimentaria y justamente es el tema con el que María Antonieta nos va a compartir en el día de hoy. 
Muchas gracias, María Antonieta. Thank you, María Antonieta, for your words. Thank you to you for the invitation. And these joining that we're doing with these intercultural centers with UMass and the University of Quintana Roo. I'd like to speak about the experience of Willy Chen to the subject of food sovereignty. It's been 10 years from 2012 to 2022. I will do a very quick recounting of our history. We started, we're classified by timing. Those 10 years, there's two periods from 12, 2012 to 2018. We started by forming a group to start a, a campesino school. We started that we are, our work teaching technical people in the communities, as well as groups of, of uh, producers through workshops in the communities. The subjects we covered were the improved, enhanced Milpa Maya, reflections on how we are feeding ourselves, talking about that, how we produce our foods, do we use or not agrotoxic things, types of seeds that we use, the installation of watering systems with solar energy. Those are some of the subjects that we started covering through 2018. And then we've also had exchange of experiences among campesinos, forming community groups to generate learning spaces to learn together, starting with methodologies, uh, campesino to campesino, producer to producer, learning by doing, creating webs with other people in the peninsula of Yucatan, we have connections with many organizations who do the same work we financing and we find academic institutions to help out. In that time, we've also had, we've joined the festivals of seeds. In the second period, we can start it from 2019 to 2022. This experience has been a change in our focus after the first years. We've worked in 12 communities. You can see a map of the region on the screen. There I mentioned the names of the communities that we've worked with, and you can read them there. And each, with each one, we have had different experiences and processes and dynamics that have been different in each community. Some that have been similar and some are very specific to each community. After 2019, we started talking more about rights, focusing on rights, a pushing a reflection and production, why we do it and how do we do it, how uh, all regarding feeding. After 2019, we started talking about rights. The same things that we had been teaching, promoting agriculture, but with a focus on rights. We started to uh, go deeper into dialogues through reflection, uh, a healthy uh, environment, a healthy life, identity and defense of our territory, uh, the good life, the rights of campesinos, male and female, of the indigenous people to be informed and to decide about the type of development that we want. And also within the team, we're also working on reflection regarding why we should not replicate dependency and um, uh, friendships that are governments that want to do things inappropriately. And so we work with the uh, communities changing the dialogue how to do it within groups, within the communities, because after a long time that we have marched on this, things have to change and improve. And after the years that we've covered to talk about technical things, we thought we could talk about more from a, uh, about rights. We don't do this with a language 
that is what attorneys use because that implies not only translate the rights to an understanding, which has another focus, another logic, but we also have to bring it to the Maya language. And so that has implied uh, a lot of challenges, not only the language, but interpreting the thoughts, uh, what territories means, why defend our dignity, our territories and why everything is linked, linked how everything's linked together. At this time, we promoted the Festival of the Seeds. We're about to have our sixth one, Festival of Seeds. We're celebrating and joining the traditions like was mentioned earlier, the blessing of the seeds and doing the whole cycle, including the harvest. And like good Mexicans, we have that desire to celebrate our culture. We always dance and we celebrate everything. So we also have a party for the uh, festival for the harvest. The producers themselves have done that. All that is accompanied by a high level of motivation because a lot of young people, as has been mentioned, many people don't believe in the in in the field, in the milpa, in the production, in agriculture. And there is many things that is not a way of life. And we have to use all the strategies possible so that we can continue promoting this and having people uh, become, at least become a contagious process. We are going to inaugurate a house for the seeds in Uyuriche. It's a small space that is uh, it says that it's going to be May 1st. This is also a result of all that work that we've done of promoting and rescuing seeds. The why, the why we can uh, use uh, seeds without using things that uh, contaminate the soil, being ecological. We talk about health, uh, food sovereignty. Why do it collectively and not do it individually? Like I said, this is a very quick summary of 10 years of work. The effects of climate change in agriculture, of course we have observed them. With uh, noticing when the, the, the rain has changed before, it was very precise. We knew when they were coming and in the behavior of the birds has already been explained. Um, we observe that. We also, in the flowering of the plants, uh, the behavior of the animals, and also that changes the way we plant. The milpa is uh, something of, of season. It has been a season thing, and especially with the watering. The last screen talks about climate justice and cultural justice. This is a conclusion. I can say that the care and conservation of the Maya jungle has been thank you to the Maya culture who has known how to live in harmony with the natural resources that the woods give us to eat, to sleep, and to produce. Historically, that's how we have lived together in a harm harm harmonious way. Everything is very documented. A thousand of thousands of years we have lived together and only recently there has never been a diminution uh, of the uh, co the jungle covering we are one of the green uh, lungs of the of the world it is due to the Maya culture it not only has to do with the climate but also the culture we have a lot to learn from this we have to uh, we learn what we have been taught. We have to continue conserving our resources. However, there's a great influence of other social situations which uh, put into risk all this cultural and environmental system. The vision of capitalist development which centers on the natural resources like the woods, the water, 
the soils of cenotes and it's not seen as a common good. That's where we have to come to defend our rights, our territory, our identity. Another phenomenon which influences in this is uh, mass tourism, which is being seen in this view of development. Especially we have the uh, Cancun, Playa del Carmen, and Tulum, where we see a lot of uh, migration by workers, abandonment, where people come to this area to work uh, in tourism, and we can see other type of rights that are violated. Projects like the Maya train, which fragments the habitat and puts in risk the ecosystems are another threat to the Maya woods and to and Maya culture. The new, the new uh, slavery, which many of us call is connected with all these forms of work in which there are no fair uh, salaries, the hours are excessive, and there is no respect to, of life, and there's a lot of discrimination too. We are well aware of that. Systematic violation of human rights, which not just have to do with the environment and the climate change, but with many other changes, social, economic, and cultural included. included. And with that, I conclude. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, María Antonieta, por, por la presentación you, y por el, for your por el trabajo que Puyoche está haciendo, ¿no? Que es uh, un trabajo fuerte, a cuesta arriba, work. Eh, It's, uh, por, por las presiones ¿no? que, que justo mencionas en la última diapositiva de, de la expansión del, del, del capital, del turismo, que, que siempre which Encuentra always de, finds ways de, de ¿no? y de, y de of hasta expanding las and reaching the communities that have been affected by the process and which shows how complex eh, the whole process pues, is and has creo que quisiera, What I'd like to do, minutos, pero, we have a few minutes, eh, Tal vez podemos eh, tomar algunas preguntas de, del público, ya sea de los que están aquí en Zoom o en, Zoom, o en el Facebook del CNI. Thank you, Maestro José Martínez for this participation. These are the questions that we have received from the CNAE. Ruben Roman Suarez sends us a question. We don't follow what oh. used to be. Y también, nos ayuda bastante tanto porque no usando químicos, we don't use chemicals. Un... We... How can I say it? We try to promote nature. There are many animals that eat grasses or vegetation, but we add chemicals. We don't use chemicals for fertilization or to get rid of uh, weeds. Mm -hmm. Bees too. Bees thrive from flowers, but by using pesticides, the bees too are dying out. There's so many things that we're killing with these chemicals. And we're now seeing, how should I say it? Um, we need to care for all this. With respect to the food, how can I say this? Let me think. Uh, for instance, 
we see that we can grow our food that we can provide for our family but now corn is not reaching us but if we can grow what is native what is ours we don't have to go out searching and buying and we would be helping ourselves because we can live on what the milpa offers us or gives us as well as the trees and the forests what we're trying to do is to preserve trees. There's so many things that we need to look after uh, regarding the care of our forests, of our jungle. Let me think, how can I say como this? Que, como que le prove, le prove. Eh, alternativa, ¿no? In other words, the, it offers si el maíz no llega, pues options. tienen una vari otra variedad. Well, que if there's no depender. corn, well, then no. we can use other. Yes, that's true. The food that we grow in the community. Each person, I mean, we're many members in the community, so everyone in that community grows their food. For instance, citrus fruits and other fruits. We don't need to buy it because we're growing it in Bien. our community. Otra pregunta. Is there any other question here? Tenemos también preguntas acá en el chat. Si quieres, we also have some questions chat from the chat. De... Maybe we we Then, take one of those. Okay. Bueno, aquí tengo una pregunta. Okay, here de... I have a question. A Let me see. Una pregunta de Brianna. Brianna here. Eh, hola, Brianna. Hi there. What happens? ¿Qué ocurre si una ceremonia What no es aceptada? If a ceremony or ritual is not accepted. ¿Cuáles son las señales? What are those signals? Eh, no sé si te refieres a, a I don't know if you mean eh, to the Ixcol. ceremonies of the Ichkol. Well. Regarding the rituals and ceremonies that I mentioned, many times the person that does not perform or does not complete these ceremonies that I mentioned, well, it affects them. They could get ill or feel sick in his body, pain, fever. And many times when one is approaching one's plot, you notice that there are snakes or birds or other animals that you don't see anymore. You don't find them. So these are signals uh, that tell you that by not completing these rituals, there is an effect. In various communities in this region, there are people, for instance, that are referred to as mem their priests of sorts who who using stones sastuk that they find within that parcel of the milpa they bless and make certain prayers to try to understand what's happening to the person and they conclude that it's because they did not perform or conclude this ceremony so if they do it again if they complete it then they find that the person's health has improved. This happens many times in the communities. Another situation could be that the person, for instance, does not perform any ritual, and as a result, they feel sick. So they realize that that process of ritual was not completed. So that situation of illness and other aspects occur for lack of completion. So it's important to do these rituals completely and good to para, avoid para those para kinds of illnesses. No Now for el, those who are men, hearing, men is, men is what, shaman, what one could refer to as a shaman, que, shaman. Que, que, It's the person la, who medicinas, pero también la, basically las is not only eh, the so-called uh, priest eh, or leader of these religious yes, ceremonies, si but also de, knows Facebook. about natural medications or medicines. There's another question. Okay. 
We don't okay. have Tenemos more questions from unas, Facebook, but más. here I see a few questions that eh, have been posted. Yes, please. A ver, eh, Rihanna, voy a unas de, de Peter uh, Crowley dice. Peter Crowley asks. ¿Qué es, eh, ¿Cuál es el, el problema principal que amenaza su trabajo? Eh, me imagino que el trabajo de todos es de I mean, Uyolche o, o de or, o de Ben Shapiro. De los trabajadores of the, de la milpa y del, y del pet patch. ¿Cuáles ¿cuál son las, pot patch? las fuerzas que, 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 la, que las amenazan, que amenazan What su are trabajo? The driving y forces that are threatening. ¿Qué, qué tipo de apoyo and what serviría, kind of support más útiles, do you think eh, would help overcome these threats? Yo me imagino que él se I would imagine that he means del exterior, ¿no? Cosa que uh, podemos maybe hacer foreign de aid, nosotros, like what can we do? What can we do from where we are now? What type of aid do you think could help you or enhance your work? Well, I think that it's not only a question regarding the sí. producers, en but general, in general. Sí. Yes, I would say so. I would like to answer from Ruo Che. A challenge in our work was what was mentioned, leaving the landscape, leaving because of political uh, policies, uh, People are leaving the farm. They're looking for other job opportunities as well as the creation of a systematic discrimination against the peasant farming. Many families feel that farming is not going to help you advance. Rather, leave the farm, go to the university, get educated. So it's not only typical of this region, but of all the country, and it's been shared. It's a situation that's generalized where they're leaving the farm and trying to go to the cities looking for better opportunities. Young people are not interested. Most of the f peasant farmers are older people, they're elders. So the farming is being abandoned, obviously, within the work. This is linked with the loss of seeds, native seeds, that is also a threat by introducing these so-called industrialized or genetic modification seeds that can threaten the uh, food as well as a monopoly of seeds and transnational companies. This is a huge threat and a uh, challenge for us. So how can, how can you help us? Well, um, It's difficult and complicated. It's a it's a topic that has to come from the heart of the people who want change and who want to do this. So it's um, it's one's own personal y, y help and job. Si, si alguien quisiera hacer una donación, If digamos, someone wants para, to make a donation, for instance, to work. Julio che está haciendo, that Julio Che is doing. ¿Hay, hay de is there a way para, that uh, we can para, link obviamente, the usted, donor usted to the recipient? De, because you do need that kind que, of donation. Yes, in the presentation, you will find the contact information. At the end of the presentation, you will get that information. Okay, we have sí. some questions of Julio Che, I don't know if we should present them here now. No? Yes, of course. Sí, adelante. Okay. The first question is, are these ritual practices associated with the milpa? Have they diminished? Are they dying? Yes, with respect to that topic, currently we notice and see that less people are doing these ritual practices for the same reasons. They don't do it because the people who used to do it, the menems, the shamans, who have all this knowledge and tradition, they're older and if they die, there's no one 
that would know and could lead these ceremonies. Our second question, a conflict between communities have been identified when people did not join uh, the program Planting Life. Well, as a fact, there were very few people who wanted to participate in this program. They felt it was a program where technicians were going to check our plots to see if we were doing everything or complying with what the program it was establishing, like that we shouldn't be burning, we shouldn't be using chemicals that we had to have, well, let me just say, it's a very demanding program. So many people said, no, we wanna be independent. We don't want anyone looking over us. We just get paid and that's it. But of course, right now, when they do see that this program has very positive effects because of the products that it's producing. So we're constantly working and we're with the technicians. So others are starting to see that maybe they should join in 2019, about 100 people joined and they requested that in 2020, maybe other producers or farmers should join. To be honest with you, it's a program that came to us and is demanding. It's a demanding program because we have to comply. For instance, we have a garden patch that contains every type that we have in our own parcels in our own plots so it's a mirror or reflection of what we have at home and we share it and bring it into this patch so everyone is asking for more because they see that this program is working well i do think that that's a very good sign that this program has a future and that when you see that more people want to participate that's a sign that there is success Thanks to the pioneers que, que proyecto, who ven, start the project fruto, pues ya and see the fruit and other people y, are interested eso, as they see that that is happening. Espacio, ¿no? So I do think that esa, this brings a breath of optimism eh, and that more people would want to mí, join. Creo que I personally think that de, we are beyond y, y the time no and que unfortunately vaya, I don't think no that we will have time to quisiera, answer all the questions. But I do want to thank uh, todas las personas all those eh, of you who have participated. Por lo, por técnico, and again, I'm really sorry for the technical issues. I hope, however, mejor. that the program Ahora as final, presented had eh, a better flow and la ran more Autónoma smoothly. Ro, and the, uni the University Autónoma del Estado, Estado Quintana Roo panelistas, and the other panelists and university hemos members. Tomado su tiempo para thank you. We've We've shared time to share the experiences that you've had and you've shared it with us and we're very thankful for that. It's a way of knowing what you're confronted momentos, with no? in, these, in, in these moments, time that we're living now del, del, and experiencing the effects of climate change and how it affects no? de, de the workers. Directa in a very Así direct way. A ustedes, eh, so, nuestro agradecimiento. we eh, extend our tenemos, gratitude eh, to all of you. Algunos, eh, certificados para, we have para some certificates para, de agradecimiento por su that we'd like to share for your participation, which will be issued and we will be con, in touch con para with all of you este diálogo, to continue this conversation. Para es un comienzo y, y, y abre la oportunidad para continuar. Opens doors to continue y para los que nos escuchan, dialogue, eh, for those who vamos a tener listening, una grabación del, del programa y program taped, lo tendremos eh, disponible we will, eh, you will have pronto to it para, soon, para las personas que so that those hayan perdido parte o, o, o hayan tenido came. que late or desconectarse antes had de que termine el programa. Leave Así que, sin más, eh, with no declaro further este ado, clausurado. I declare no sé si that we have concluded. And if our eh, colleague Evid wants to add a few words, well. De parte de nuestros compañeros en Felipe Carrillo Huerto. Felipe Carrillo Huerto. Well, perhaps to compliment 
I think what has happened today is something historical, really, because we were facing a challenge, which is to create an intercultural conversation or dialogue. And this dialogue, if we want to view it from a more academic perspective, I think it's interdisciplinary. I believe that what has happened today with our colleagues in UMass Boston and our colleagues here are Lanzmann. Well, I think they're the most important actors and they too are cooperating with Noche. And I want to do a personal thankful to Professor Maria Antonieta. With her, we've been able for many years to create a link with the uh, Universidad Autónoma del Estado de Quintana Roo. So I think we've created a channel of communication and a channel of mutual cooperation. So I believe it's the beginning of many more conversations and processes and exercises and moments to continue sharing the, the knowledge. And hopefully this would allow us to incorporate elements to understand and find how this global phenomenon of climate change is affecting our daily lives. I am very, very pleased with the Center of uh, Intercultural Studies so that today this activity, this dialogue in the Maya community of Felipe Carrillo Puerto, Carrillo Puerto is a holy place. It's a center, a holy center. And I think that I want to think of it as a, a garden of growth. So I want to thank everyone very much. Gracias a todos. Thanks. Thanks to all.